Who here hasn't been to space? Why? <laughs> you better not throw up on my ship. Approaching jump in three, two, one. Anyway, WandaVision's Matt Shackman has been talks of helming the Fantastic Four film, and Kevin Feige loved what he did over at with WandaVision. As as you know, that is my favorite, my favorite MCU show, um, and I think that that's he's already. I mean, it's, but he's not just known for what he did over at um, WandaVision, and excuse me, in the MCU, he's done several seasons of uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh -huh. He's done episodes. Excuse me. Directed episodes of Everybody Hates Chris. He's uh -huh. directed episodes. I mean, many different genres, many different um, sitcoms and things like that. But he's only done sitcoms. This is going to be his first feature film that he's ever done. But he's already been under the Marvel umbrella, so he has a relationship with Marvel already. And I've heard, I've seen people on Twitter and things saying like, you know, um, I don't know, is Matt Shackman. I was expecting, you know, maybe a bigger director or somebody that's already done films or whatever. But here's the thing: before the Russo brothers did anything Marvel, nobody knew who the fuck the Russo brothers were. Uh -huh. Nope. You know, there were so many different directors that have worked for Marvel that nobody knew who the hell they were right. until they started working for the machine. Marvel I was gonna say the thing Marvel with Marvel. Feige is he picks those directors, and whenever they he builds relationships with them, and that when they right. make them good content and content that wins them awards and every like, I think Wandavision won the most awards so far as a tv show and everything right, so Marvel, just yeah. probably just seeing that he probably just had already built a connection with them working through the pandemic and everything so it's not i mean it's easy to believe that he would go with them in my opinion and everything just because mm -hmm. um from history fight whenever he wants projects to go well he usually sticks with someone he has a relationship or he's close with or something right well and that's a, that's a thing too like look at taika waititi so uh, no, that's another one that's he, another name he uh uh no, I didn't know who James the fuck Gunn. That, I don't know who the fuck Taika Waititi was. I had no idea. And then you know he did Ragnarok, and I was like, holy shit! Now now we've seen that. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, we have seen that. Uh, um, sometimes I don't work, right? You know, he he hit struck gold with Ragnarok, but then he fucking, you know, took a shit on what was um, the newest Thor movie. So it goes back and forth, but I'm, I'm saying if you're just going for these big name, well known directors, like I always jump to Spielberg and the Transformer movies, right. right? Like they weren't that good of you know, not they weren't it for me, especially the further along they got, right? So just because it's a big name doesn't mean you have a passion for the project, doesn't mean you have your finger on the pulse of what fans want. Um, and so no, I mean I think WandaVision was an incredibly done show because it was done its own way. It broke the formula, the standard mold of an MCU. <laughs> It definitely set a pace that was very hard to follow up, right? Right. And so, no, I think if you have people that are passionate about these works, passionate about these characters, bring them on and let them shine. Right. You know? Now, YTT, I think that's a good example of someone they now need to reel in. It's like, hey, 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 we let you get a little too wild, a yeah. little too much freedom. Honest critique. Just because you make one bad movie doesn't mean you're a bad director. But, like, you got to play with that stuff, you know? And I think WandaVision's the best thing on the Disney Plus side they've done. Right. And see, that's what I'm saying. Marvel and Kevin Feige, uh, like like you said, and it's always going to be in, in Feige we trust, for me personally, as being the Kevin Feige shield that I am. But I think you take... Well, Kevin Feige, we've seen Kevin Feige and Marvel's ability to take, like you said, Taika Waititi mm -hmm. director, James Gunn type directors who make niche type films before Mar before they started doing Marvel, making three mm -hmm. three million two three two to three million dollar films that they were making to now coming to Marvel and making a hundred million to two hundred million dollar films. Mm -hmm. That's the machine of having the machine Marvel behind you. So I definitely think Shackman can definitely do it. And again, he's worked with Marvel already. That's an advantage he already has working with right. them on on wandavision so he knows how they operate it's not like any he's going to be surprised by anything that that they're wanting to do he knows the stories that they're wanting to tell right. and i think him already working on other sitcoms outside of wandavision i mean we saw the family aspects that he brought into wandavision mm -hmm. but him working on everybody hates chris you see family aspects there you see family aspects and and some of the other sitcoms and things that he's worked on so with him taking on marvel's first family mm -hmm that is going to be there. I, I feel like right. that's going to be in good hands. And like I said, we the mystical things that happened in WandaVision, I feel like this Fantastic Four film, in order for it, if, if the rumors are true and they are stuck in time or they are whatever they have been, the, the mysticism behind this has to be grand. Right. And I think he can... I, th I, I, I don't know. If I can trust it, I trust it. So I think Shackman... Yeah. I loved WandaVision, so I think he can do it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's um really too much 
negative that can be said about that. Anybody saying anything in the comments about it? Hey, I actually want to throw something out real fast. Uh, Double Tar just sent us twenty fucking dollars. Oh wow! I want to say something real fast. So that is the first donation we've ever that had on this the, channel. That is That's the crazy. First. And, and dude, that is <laughs> that is uh, that the, gave dude. I got chills. Holy shit! That's um, wild. That is the absolute <sighs> first uh, anything we've ever received. Um, <laughs> Clap it up for double you so much. <laughs> that means so much to us. Wow. That made yeah. me want to work my ass off some more. No, I mean, that's a, I, just, I wow. just wanted to point Thank that out you. as a big deal because, like... You got to it before you know, me because I'm, you know... <laughs> it's just like, uh, that's the first time we've ever... At the end of the way, literally, when we look back on this channel, whether this channel grows into something crazy and big, you know, whatever That is the amazing. World, that's the first... That's, that that's that Frame that first dollar, you know what I'm saying? Right, that's... So, Double Tar, that is beyond appreciated by us i just wanted to throw that out there sorry for interrupting the fucking no stream, no but... no that is that is uh worth shouting out we appreciate that brother and we i really will do. go in just just to cut back to this um one thing that i like that marvel does and marvel has the ability to do and do very well is like i'll throw out simu liu so simu liu had other roles but it was a lot of dramas and and, and uh comedies and shit like that right mm -hmm. well, they they find him and give him the shot to be shang chi he did great. It was a great movie, right? Right. You know, look at, uh, have you ever heard the, you know, we've talked about it, the story of how fucking Miss Marvel, how she got cast. Right. Marvel. It was real sketchy, weird. She'd never done any of this shit before, right? Right. But they found her. They find great people. So when it comes to these directors, you know, th there's, Hollywood is a little elitist, right? Uh, you're an A-list, you're getting the fucking role, right? Right. Um, you're an A big name director, you're getting the movie. Where whenever you have a, a studio as big as Marvel, doing as many projects and things, they have a chance to diversify. And they have a chance to bring in an audience that loves these things, that grows up. Sure, I'm a Steven Spielberg, I can make an amazing movie. You can't tell me I can't, right? Look at my look at my roster. But like, I'm gonna, you know I'm gonna make a movie so you'll throw it to me, but I don't know who this character is. I, right. I don't understand why fans like this character. Right. Or you get a young guy who's a good director, but it's like, that's my dude. Right. I love Black Panther, or I love Hulk so much, let me do it. I'm hiring that guy. Right. And that's just what it is, and Marvel has the opportunity to do it, and I think they do it well. Yeah, I know they do, and I, like I said, it's going to be in Feige, we trust. Um, and I, I, I think that Shackman's going to do a good job. Any other last... Does anybody say anything else in the chat about this topic here with Shackman and James... Or James Gunn, the Fantastic Four? Personally, as you know, I'm ready to see this Fantastic Four film. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to see the Fantastic Four enter the MCU. I think at D23, which we will be live for, by the way. We will be live for D23, for all, any, if anybody was wondering that. I think that's when we're going to get our announcement of Shackman probably being defined as the definitive director because right now it's just speculation right. and i think that we are also going to get our cast i think we're going to get our cast of the fantastic four we're going to get to see who i, I who's going to be mr fantastic the invisible uh -huh. woman johnny and right ben so hopefully because uh, hopefully we do because i mean i do hope the rumors are true that we see ben Grimm and she hulk and everything i think i, I hope so too because be really that would cool. just i think that would just be big and everything just for she hulk just as a surprise cameo and everything that i think right. that would be huge okay. <laughs> and like i said this is one that i've you know, last time we talked Fantastic Four. I'm really excited to see this. I'm excited to see it. I have my reservations about how well I think it's going to do, no matter who's in that director's seat, because of previously kind of how it's going. You know what I'm saying? Um, and see, I just don't. No, no, and that's fair. And that's fair. I'm just saying I'm trepidatious. Right. You know what I mean? I like... I, I, it's, it's this weird feeling I have where I'm like, I want to get them in, and then I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? Their entrance to me, their big movie, their whatever, right? I'm like... I, I really want it to be good, right? I, I, from previous movies, it's hard to make it good, but I want it to. But either way, I just need them in this. I think I think the past problem that previous films, or the Fantastic Four, what they have done, the issue has been, especially with the 2015 version, it's an origin, and you're taking that. And like, it's like uh -huh. Kevin Feige said in the last time he was asked about this. But well, we all know the origin. But how do you take that origin? and make that story something that you've never that none of us have ever seen before mm -hmm. and again I, that's just the brilliance in the mcu handling these characters outside of you had at the time fox handling the fantastic four like i went back and watched the original fantastic four that is on disney plus now mm -hmm. with um jessica alba and everyone for its time it wasn't bad 
there are it, but film superhero films in that time were oof, unless, unless it was Sam Raimi Spider Man or something like that. But yeah. they were oof, or the X Men. Um, um, but it was there was a lot of corny stuff in there. A lot of you go back and look at those films. Those films are really just not that great, especially that 2015 one. So I just think taking taking Kevin Feige's approach, taking the MCU approach, having someone as you know as creative as Shackman behind it, I think that again, trepidatious is you definitely that's valid to be concerned. Looking at the past Fantastic Four films and uh-huh. that 2015 one, <laughs> looking at that shit and how bad it is. So, but I I I, I do trust Shackman if that is true in taking over, and I of course trust Feige. So, so I'm gonna hit the comments before we move on. Are you planning on moving on? Uh yeah yeah hit the comments. Okay that's fine. So, uh, Double Tar said, also, again, shout out Double Tar, do you guys think that Kang is the one trapping the Fantastic Four? Um, I've seen that. I've seen that rumor, and it is something, it is possible, because the rumor is, well, the idea that, um, who was, who directed Ant-Man? And, uh, um, I forget his name, I forget the director of Ant-Man, but that's who they wanted to helm, um, the Fantastic Peyton Four Reed. film. Yes, Peyton, Peyton Reed, Reed originally, want, he pitched to Marvel that he wanted to do the uh, Fantastic Four film and his idea was that they were going to be trapped in the 60s or they were going to be from the 60s mm-hmm. but they were going to be trapped in the quantum realm um, and being trapped in that quantum realm um, you know, whatever, whatever and then get, get there, in their film they were going to get out. So it's very possible. You get, right. Think about it. we got Quantum Mania coming up. We know that Kang has, uh, uh, is it, it's Chronopolis in mm-hmm. the comics in, in, in the quantum realm and the, the expectation that, or the uh, the 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 uh, the rumor around that the city we saw in Ant Man was Chronopolis and all those things, it's very mm-hmm. possible that Kang right. could have trapped them. Well, when we see that, and they, the only thing they've really laid for sure for us in the MCU so far about Kang and the one who watches and this and that is, is while they're figuring out the multiverse, they're trying to understand it. Kang's done figured it out, right? So it could very well be a thing of that he knows how big of a threat they are to him. So he made sure that timeline was one that he would not be bothered by. Right. So, I mean, I see it as a very potential, his first thing he needs to go after. Um, and, and I, and I, I do I, think it's good that they <clears throat> have already shown a, a, Reed Richards exists, right? They showed him in, in um, Doctor Strange, right? right? Which I think is good because they're basically saying, yeah, these characters are here. They are. So it's, it's easy to do that. If, well, where is our Reed Richards at? What happened to him? And then you play on it from there. Right. Yeah. And some heroes, you know, in, in those kind of little cameos and, and subset characters, some heroes within our 616 in the MCU could be kind of like we saw in She-Hulk, the whole man attack, got a bar, has claws. They just be laying low, being whatever, or then some could be tr- potentially trapped by Kang. And I, I think, too, to go back to that really quick with Kang, I, I think that Kang is... Uh... You know, if you look at the leaked, the stuff that we kind of saw pe- from people recording the uh, trailer from SDCC from Quantumania or Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, uh, when Kang asked Ant-Man, you know, when Ant-Man said, hey, buddy, you might want to chill out, I'm an Avenger, and Kang said, uh, you know, have I killed you before? I-, I think with that, you can already assume that, first of all, Kang already knows that who all these people are. He knows who Reed Richards is. He knows who Xavier He knows yeah. who Tony Stark is. He, You know, he's dealt with them before. I think it's not outside the realm to think that he is going through time and getting rid of heavy hitters, getting rid of people that could potentially do something to foil his overall plan. Why would I keep Reed Richards on the playing table when he's one of the smartest minds in the MCU? Let me put, let me sideline him. Let me sideline Charles. No, let that's, me sideline, you know. I saw a video that they're saying a little, that theory is that Kang, that everything that's happening in the MCU is just Kang's plan, making right. 616 weaker for him right. to actually come and take over everything, which it makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. even with Hulk just now leaving in She-Hulk, Hulk's not here anymore. It's like, right? Ain't no like we said, ain't nobody on Earth to deal with Hulk. Let alone, ain't no one on Earth to deal with Kang anymore. Really? It's true. Hey, I want to give out one more shout out because uh, we also just got a twenty five dollar donation <laughs> wow. from uh, Namir Sh- Khan. Shot, no, that shout crazy. out my boy Namir. <laughs> That's my friend Namir. Uh, I got you. The, uh, oh, uh, he uh, he be watching a lot of vids. Shout out you. You we know, appreciate. Uh, he be doing his thing as um, well. So yeah, this is crazy. Oh yeah, uh, um, um, double stir. Uh, he did say that. He in the trailer he says he before? says uh, so. Ant Man walks up or he's walking up to Ant Man and Ant Man tells him, "Hey, buddy, you know, chill out. I I've, I'm an Avenger. You don't want to do this." And Kang looks at him and says, "You're an Avenger. Have I killed you before?" 
And I think that line is just brilliantly delivered by Jonathan Majors. And I can't wait to see the actual no, yeah, I trailer. I was going to say, when, even watch, whenever we watch his facial expression saying that shit, I know it's yeah. going to be fucking brilliant. Because that yeah. I went back and watched that little elevator scene from Loki where he's like just being mm-hmm. a little goofball, like time travel, like just mm-hmm. teleporting around. I'm like, this thing is but brilliant. I, one thing I love about <laughs> that whole brilliant, scene, man. that whole scene. Even, like you said, he was being goofy in the elevator, but then he had that time where he was talking, and they were all sitting it down. It's serious, he got serious, bro. He was it... like, I, I, I stopped the multiversal war. And, you know, he was when he got serious with them, and he started calling Loki, or what do you call Sylvie, murderer, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Like, I, I, I think Jonathan Majors is going to crush this role as king. I cannot wait to see it. No, he brings that, like, Mm -hmm. realism to it, where it's like you can actually make, like, a human being feel like the realism to it to actually be scared. Like, it's not all fictional or comic book or anything. Well, and I like how they did that with... with We've seen him do it well, the humanization of a villain, of Mm -hmm. a comic book villain. Right. With with Thanos. I loved the way... Oh, I loved Thanos. He was so calculating he carried his pain on his it was, it was his noble mission you could tell they humanized what could be difficult to do in a comic book format right because some comic book villains make <coughs> sense in a comic book but in a real movie or whatever it's like that's that's goofy i like right. what they're doing with kang right me too I like and, and if, if thanos is the blueprint if he was the first one to show they can do it I think Jonathan Major's going to kill it. I, I think we need to be seeing some type of hints, though, at Kang. Like, I don't, I'm not saying we need to see Kang right now or anything like mm-hmm. that, but, you know, it's kind of like how everybody was like, oh, we finally addressed um, what, what, what the, uh, which, which was the, uh, the, um, who was coming out of the ice? Which, which, which one was that? Uh, which celestial him. was that? Whichever celestial it was, it was coming out of the ice. Like, we finally addressed it in She-Hulk because people were like, "Why have we not addressed that?" There's a giant ice man. We finally addressed it though. But uh, is it Tiamat? No, that hit, Tiamat's not the one sticking up. Okay, so so we we finally we finally I have addressed to look that up now because uh, it's gonna bother yeah. me. <laughs> I was like looking at you uh, like, Can you... yeah. So we finally addressed that, but with us addressing that, like my thing is. When are we going to address Kang? When are we going to, you know, I guess Loki season two, maybe that would be the more. Which comes out first, Quantum Mania? Quantum Mania comes out first. Before. It is. It is Tiamat. Okay, it is Tiamat. I guess I was wrong. I lied. I wake up to spread fucking false information every day. <laughs> so yeah, like it's it's uh it's it's interesting. I'm 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 really ready to see what they're doing with Kang and everything like that. Um like I said, I think the Fantastic 4, I think we will see something with Kang in that. Obviously, that's what that starts. Is that the start of phase 5 or the end of Ant-Man? No. No, uh, um, um Fantastic 4. Fantastic 4. I think it would be the start of phase 5. Is it phase five? I can't remember. Yeah, pull up that timeline. Um, there's a lot coming yeah, out. Yeah, there's, there's so much going on. Um, um, I will say, to, to, to finish with. a couple of the comments, we've got to be a little faster about these. Um, Double Tar said it's Krasinski coming back. Me, personally, I don't I don't want him coming back for that. Who is it? Krasinski, to be Reed Richards. Really? Yeah. You don't want him back? No, who I don't. Would you, who would you want? See, no, we're not playing that game. Well, no, because... <laughs> what we're doing here, hold on, so what, what about what I said earlier. You, you find Simu Liu to do um, uh, Shang-Chi. You find the girl is doing Miss Marvel, right? I, I like them not necessarily having to go with A-listers. I like that because I like fresh faces. I like people who want to be in the role for a long time. You can't fully convince me Krasinski would want to stay for the full, you know, the full run through. Do you know how long he has been saying he wants to yeah. be Reed Richards? Yeah, I know. I mean, maybe it's just because I am such an Office fan that I see fucking Jim every time I see him and it won't go away. I mean, but that's me. That's my fault. There's, um, I, I I'm saw... sorry, even in a quiet place, he's running with some kids and he's running and then he makes the farm and everything. I'm like, huh, Dwight, sure, sure, Dwight was right, huh, Jim? You're fucking a farmer now, huh? I can't pull myself out of that. I, I, I really, I, I like, I liked him in the role as, um, Reed in Multiverse of Madness, but before Multiverse of Madness, to me, it had to be him. Like, he had to be Reed Richards. Before I saw Multiverse of Madness, he just had to be him. Now that I've seen him in the role, not that he did a bad job, I thought he did, you know, for the little lines he had, I thought it was brilliant. But now, I'm like, okay, at this point, I just want to see who they've cast. Like, right, who, right. who is... Because I even saw a fan cast of Pin Bagley, and I didn't even think about that until I saw him as a fan cast in, like, the, the you know, the... the uh, 
Photoshop version and in the in Mr. in the Mr. Fantastic suit. Mm-hmm. Pin Badley could he looks like him. He looks like him. I think and, and Pin Badley's a great actor. We've seen I mean look at you. He does great in you. So I don't know. Yeah. Um uh real quick, last thing. Um is what's coming out first, Ant Man or Loki season two? It's Ant Man, right? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, it's Ant Man. Okay, is... yeah, because someone here saying that uh uh the Loki season. They pushed Ant Man up. Gang. I believe they pushed Ant Man up I, to January. I mean, it, it's the we've seen in the trailers. You know, Aunt Kang is coming to Ant Man. <laughs> you know, we, we we've seen the little snippets. We know that that'll be his first introduction. And then I think what Loki is going to do is play on what I think Loki is going to shine a light on what Kang has done in the multiverses. It'll almost be. I feel like it'll. I feel like Loki is going to be the one that's going to be kind of. Kind of like how Hulk was at the beginning of Infinity War when he said he's coming, and they're like, "Who?" And it's like Kang, Art, Kang, Thanos. He's coming. Mm-hmm. I think Loki's going to be the one that has to tell. Right. And, you know, it's but that's gonna... what I'm saying. The whole season, he could be figuring it out. Right. Figuring out. Oh my gosh, and understand the different, the different facets, the different avenues of. Oh, okay, he's done this to these. I literally feel like in this head canon here, the last episode of Loki is going to be Loki going, "Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck!" Figuring out how bad this is. It could be the capturing the Fantastic Four. It could be but a see, lot of things, I, I, he, and then going to Thor. But I think he already knows the gravity of how heavy and how serious this is. We saw that on his face at the end when he was like, he's coming, he's terrifying, he knows everything, he's planned Hold everything. On, he, he knows. Yeah, no, he knows, and when he right. turned and saw the statue, the look on his face, and then the confusion on his face when they're saying, you know, who are you? Are you an analyst? You know, we don't even know where the fuck he is exactly. right now, yeah, what branch true. on the timeline he is right now. So that's why I said Loki season two is going to be extremely interesting but i also think not only is it going to be interesting it's going to be pivotal to the multiversal saga like Mm -hmm. it's going to be one of those that you have to watch in order to understand what's going to be going on probably in kang dynasty and some of the other stuff Mm -hmm. we got one here that says if loki is going to be figuring things out could they take us to a different universe with different avenger variants i think it's very possible i I mean it's very possible mm -hmm. because i mean we we saw the lokis they gave us and yeah I think it's very possible that we could be seeing um, a variance, but I, I also think that, well, I don't even, I don't know. I'm ready for the reunion with him and Thor. You know, he, I, I feel like at this point too, he is going to be trying to reach out to his brother, trying to, trying to. Does he even think that? Does he know if Thor's alive? You know, this is well, actually, this is a different Loki. Uh-huh. This is not the Loki that was killed yep. by Thanos. This is Loki. Okay, my bad. So yes, he doesn't know about that. He doesn't know about anything. He doesn't know about anything that happened. Or- right. So wow, I guess, yeah, okay, he yeah. But we saw, <laughs> we like Thor really think Loki actually gone, like dead, dead, like tatted, dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so that that is that on that. So uh, as always, let us know down below in the comments what you guys think. What are you guys thinking of? Uh, what's going to be going on with the Fantastic Four with Matt Shackman? Do you think that Matt Shackman is a good idea for it? Do you was he at even on your list? Did you know who Matt Shackman was before any of this? Did you have someone else that you personally wanted to direct the Fantastic Four? Or are you just like I don't care? I just want to see what they're going to bring at S or at D twenty three and hopefully get these announcements. So yeah. let us know down below in the comments. We're going to be. Here.